Hey guys, Greg here, Bone Tactical, and today I'm bringing you episode two of pistol skills. Episode one was basic pistol skills. Episode three is advanced pistol skills, and this is intermediate pistol skills. Now, the fundamentals was episode one. The fundamentals are key subjects that we always need to work on. Anybody, no matter how basic or advanced you are, the fundamentals are always the same. Expanding from there, what we're going to discuss in this video is shooting from cover and concealment, the use of concealed carry, shooting from the draw, shooting positions, shoot, move, communicate, all of that stuff. But it's always based on the fundamentals, right? We're going to start off by saying this plate carrier is from LA Police Gear and we're shooting it and it's broken the buckle so far but it's and slipped a little bit but it's still on the guy and not my favorite plate carrier but cheap the plates rts tactical metal plates their only real downside is that they're very heavy from there they stopped all the bullets so far today's training session this backpack is really pretty cool and it's from zahal.org as well as my hat provided by zahal.org a lot of these guys you can use code bone tactical 10 for 10 percent off pretty much if you if it doesn't work then you can email any of them and they'll give you some kind of a discount code for bone tactical i i can't remember all the discount codes for all the different companies i apologize i will do my best to link them in the description below anyway let's get into the stuff this system is pretty cool you've at this point you've already seen how it kind of pulls up looks like a backpack looks like a pretty standard backpack and pulls up and slams on like this i've got it set up to my liking and part two of this pistol skill video we're discussing concealed carry concealed carry is extremely important because as a civilian and even as a gray man or as a you know secret squirrel i guess you could say spy whatever you want to say 007 whatever you want to say anybody that's not in like a giant military group you're number one element of is surprise okay the element of surprise it's uh it's the most important thing for just about anybody in a non-permissive environment or in any kind of an engagement physical alter altercation combat anything element of surprise is everything well concealed carry is necessary for the element of surprise so this backpack is not only an armored plate carrier but it is also able to be set up for concealed carry so i just pull this out and have my pistol it's an option right it's going to be faster, obviously, to have my sidearm on my side, but we've done tons of videos discussing the El Sicario Covert Concealed Carry Shirt and how that aids in any kind of carry position otherwise, right? So we've got so many options, but it's important to know that we're discussing what needs to be done and what's important as far as the training goes. And step one of, of your pistol skills is just getting to know the pistol and the, and the dynamics, which is how you hold the pistol, right? The grip, make sure you're choked all the way up in the grip. Trigger squeeze, make sure you squeeze, don't pull or jerk. Make sure that your finger is correctly placed on the trigger, all that stuff we covered in one, right? Hand position, all that stuff, all the dynamics and fundamentals. Now we're gonna discuss the draw, okay? Now your draw is kind of any, any kind of a fighting stance, you're in here tight. So it, it pretty much stays there. Here, I'm here. It doesn't matter if I'm here, if I'm here, uh, appendix, hip, behind the back, whatever. Okay. So I'm in here tight, altercation, and I'm here, boom. Okay. So I'm in this, I'm in this position here, and um, that's my draw stroke. Okay. You want to have the, when you're doing reloads and stuff, another big thing is the drills. So in episode one, we just did two shots body, one shot head. We'll probably stick with that, but we're going to be doing reloads. We might throw in some malfunctions, some empty magazines into our kit. Let your buddy, load your, your stuff, throw in some empty magazines, use a, use a recoil spring, and you have a training gun that maybe if you have a gun that doesn't work that great or malfunctions, this is a Frankenstein build that malfunctions all the time, so I use it pretty much specifically for training, all right? There's tons of little tips and stuff you can use, both eyes open when shooting, we discussed in episode one, always situational awareness. We're shooting some targets here, and I'll show you guys they're just some pretty standard uh, paper targets that we've put onto the wall here. And we're going, you know, a lot of times we'll either do just double tap to the body or we'll do two shots body, one shot head. 
This one, I've just been doing double taps to the body, not running through a, a bunch of ton, a, a ton of ammo. And uh, also we were testing the plate carrier. So I've been doing a lot of, of double taps to the body. We will, like I said, discuss cover and concealment as well. Cover and concealment is so important because you know any kind of an actual real altercation, real world altercation, your shooting skills are only as good as your ability to protect yourself from the oncoming bullets because when you're using a firearm you know theoretically to defend yourself then the idea is that you're using that firearm because somebody else is shooting at you so if somebody else is shooting at you um, you want to change a few different things you want to change your shooting position to minimal minimize their target okay the amount of space that they can use i used an example in video one of uh some guys who who basically modern gunfighters and when they pull the pistol they drop to the ground immediately and those a couple that have that mentality to do that seem to always come out on top regardless of who has the better range or you know youtube guy fighting skills because a lot of people are competition shooters you know they're they're sticking their head in a window or whatever around a thing and they're flush here but I mean, you want to be on the ground. You want to minimize your your profile. You want to be concealed. And the difference between concealment and cover is cover protects bullets. Concealment hides you. Okay, that's pretty much the only difference. You can have both as well. You can be hidden behind uh, cover and it's concealment uncover. Let's discuss a little bit of vehicle dynamics. I'll dispel one of the biggest myths on the internet. And every tactical guy will tell you this is wrong. But... You don't necessarily want to have some sort of a distance off from your cover. And this is because what guys will tell you is that I need to maintain this distance because bullets coming this way, let's say that these three guys are shooting at me, you're gonna hit the top of my hood. They're gonna ricochet and hit me in the face if I'm close to the vehicle right here. Okay, well, first of all, I don't really wanna just be having my face right here the whole time. That's not, that's not what I'm doing. And if I'm back here, I'll tell you what, it's way worse to be back here. Why is that? Because now I'm shooting and guess what? Who's flanking me? All right. Who's got a rifle and they're shooting me from over here because I'm off of my cover. I would rather be hugging the cover, popping up here, taking a shot, popping out there, taking a shot, popping out. Okay. So I can try, I can see if I can shoot a couple shot or two down here. Accurate, accurate shot, not just dumping mags for no reason, and then sneak back over here. So that goes in line with shoot, move, communicate. If I've got a team, I fire a shot and I move. All right, it doesn't necessarily have to be that I'm moving, you know, to Mexico, right? No, I mean, I it could be, I could just be moving to a different shooting position because if I pop out here, shoot, go back, pop out here, shoot, right? If pop out here, shoot, go back. What's gonna happen? That guy's just gonna hover his sights over here waiting for me to pop out. When I pop out, I'm dead. So shoot, move, communicate is that simple or as advanced to team communications, your team needs to know where you're gonna be going, where everybody in the team is gonna be going, where their next move is, where their last move was, where they're coming from, and all needs to be worked out together, all right? So all of this stuff comes together for shoot, move, communicate. You shoot and you move and you communicate. You gotta be planning three steps ahead for all of your team members. If communicating is also empty, I'm out of ammo, moving to this, that, the other, communicate within your guys, okay? Let people know what's going on. Low on ammo, you know, whatever's going on, let your guys know. If you're, if you're in the vehicle, we've got a guy that's looking really strange coming up on us. If you're in an armored vehicle, all right, guys, nobody get out of the vehicle. We're gonna run this vehicle until it's inoperable and then we're going to defend the vehicle at that point all right so then you tell you make sure your guys know what's going on where what situation you're in uh that being said i'm i'm, I'm sharing this video based off of my experience having survived non-permissive environments and that's what i do right that's what i've done my whole life i'm not sharing this this is not a competition shooting video obviously it's not about looking pretty or looking cool it's about being the last man standing and surviving in the nastiest environments and using a pistol as a tool to do so. So that's where we're coming from in this. And I know it's a lot different than what a lot of people may tell you, but we talked about, so we talked about cover. All right, now let's talk about the parts of the vehicle that are, that are gonna protect you. You've got your engine block. Pretty much any car has an engine block. I don't know about the new electric 
cars, what the deal is with them, I'd have to research it. You've got a, an axle, right? You've got your wheels. The wheel by itself won't protect you, but with the axle, it should. A lot of wheels are aluminum alloy these days. A lot of them have holes in them and all that stuff. If you've got a pickup truck and it's, and it's lifted, it's a pretty awesome opportunity to be able to use the inside of your vehicle here to shoot underneath from there. Then you've got a bunch of protection, okay? So now let's talk about shooting positions. In, in, the, in video three, we talk about getting in nasty positions, trying to shoot through little holes, getting bit by bugs, cut up by thorns. You guys can see I'm, I'm torn up to pieces right now from running and gunning through these mountains out here. I've got seven days going with basically sleeping in, you know, in the woods and, and just doing training every day, sleeping a few hours a night, training, 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 making, doing publicity, testing gear, all that kinds of stuff. So I'm beat right now. But that is kind of, that's when, that's how you really learn. When, if you can do this stuff at 20% capacity, when you're beat to crap, when you're covered in cuts and scars and, and, and hurting everywhere from insect bites and it's hot as crap, all that stuff, always be safe. Don't do it if you're not comfortable with it. Don't push yourself with a gun. Don't push yourself. But when you're ready for it, then when, the, when you've got all the pistol basics and manipulation of the pistol itself down, then you can start teaching yourself how to concealed carry, right? Check out the Elsa Cario shirt, the con covert concealed carry shirt. That's a lifesaver. Uh, I prefer, you know, somewhere on the belt carry is probably the easiest way to carry. This is an extreme option and really awesome. I wouldn't say that it would be my primary option ever, but it's something cool. If I had a pistol on my belt and then this bag in my truck, it would be even way cooler. So this is the Masada backpack from Zahal Org, by the way. Going from there, we'll discuss shooting positions. So around this truck, I've got certain shooting positions, which would be some any kind of a sort of a kneeling position. What you always wanna remember with your shooting positions is that you wanna be able to move after you get in position. So I don't wanna just lay flat on my face. Most of the time, that's not the greatest idea, all right? But this is a kneeling position. I can go from the kneeling position. I've got a bar here I can grab on. I've got this part of the tire. I've got this part of the wheel to steady myself and make it easier and quicker. All right, I would be doing it with my left hand because I'd have my pistol in my right hand. So I go from easily to a crouch position where I can be checking out what's going on, getting a feel for my location. I can go for a seated position, okay, here. But I, I usually like to bring one foot in I have one foot on the tire, or if I'm a little bit off like this, then I would just roll. The reason I have this foot in is so that I can get my, my weight up on this foot. You always want to think about athletics and being able to move after. If I don't have a shot there, I might have a shot here, okay? So I'll go through these. These are all different and possible shooting positions that you can work through. I want to be able to come always up and down and it's not a necessarily a bad thing to hug cover it just always depends on the circumstances right so we'll walk through a few of these shooting positions now with you and actually do some shooting all right so let's say going live that i'm in a coming up to a vehicle i just i just exited my vehicle for example why would i want to exit my vehicle i will cover that is if the vehicle's inoperable. The vehicle is a much bigger, much better weapon than a pistol, if I, especially if I'm driving, because I want to either do one or the other driver shoot. I'd rather drive, get out of there. If the vehicle's down, okay. If I have to choose in 95% of vehicles, 99% of vehicles, whether I go forward or go backward, depending on my surroundings and where the enemy is, I'm going to go forward. So I go here, and the first thing I do is I'm seeking cover. I'm seeking cover. Okay, here, I don't know if I'm completely covered, but I'm pretty covered. I think that my enemy's in this general direction, but I don't know for sure. Okay, so I'm gonna look and see. I'm gonna do a quick scan. Okay, boom, I don't really see anything over there. I see some abandoned buildings behind me. I'm gonna lay down some shots. Once I find out if I can get a beat on where they're at or where they're shooting from, then I'm gonna try and get away from the situation over to one of those abandoned buildings, maybe take some more effective accurate shots i go here and i lean out i don't really see anything okay i still not able to see anything i'm gonna have to go lower or i'm gonna have to pop up well it's quicker to pop up so what i'll do first 
is I'm just going to quickly pop up. I'm going to have my pistol in place just in case I see something. Two shots body, one shot head. Was able to see something, popped up, had an enemy target. Going to reload. So, reloading. Now, I just popped up and put some shots on range. I noticed there was a couple other guys off to the right. Well, are those guys flanking me? Is anybody flanking me? In a realistic situation, I'd hit the ground here and try and get the heck out of Dodge. There's abandoned buildings behind me. I'd get over there. But for the purposes of the video, we're talking about different shooting positions. So now I'm going to practice a different shooting position. I popped up from the front. I think I might have one chance to pop out without actually hitting the ground any further. The reason that I'm going to be doing this, I'm going to try and pop out the front on my feet before I hit the ground. If I'm stuck here and I, and I don't have a retreat, then I'm going to still continue to stay in whatever position is the most mobile until I have to move lower and lower as long as I'm always switching positions like we talked about. I'm going to pop out here. Here I've got a, a pretty difficult shot, but I've got a shot. Was able to put a round on target. Center mass. Okay, that's fine. A center mass shot is enough for right now for what I want to do. So I'm going from here. I'm pretty much worn out my feet. They know I've popped out the front. They know I've popped out the top. From here, I'm going to just go down to my butt. Like I said, hugging this tire as tight as possible. I've got one foot in for to be close, one foot up on the tire. I popped out here, I popped out here. So I'm going to scan, see if I can see if anybody's trying to flank me. I don't think so, not yet. I don't see anything. Roll over here and see if I can get a shot from under the truck. If I can't, I'm going to worm a little bit more. I see a guy now, and I'm going to try and take the shot. I'm empty. I'm going to crowd my cover again. But this is not a good position to be in because I can't really move from here. I'm going to rotate and get up on one foot. Then do my mag change. The lo next logical position is going to be another position down to the ground to the side. I'm back on my feet because I've pretty much burnt my options here. I've got one round left in the chamber. What am I going to do? Well, one option now instead of doing a reload would be what we call a combat reload. I've got no rounds in my magazine. I'm going to toss my magazine. A lot of times I'm going to be storing my magazine, but for the purposes of the video, I'm tossing them so they don't get messed up around here and I step on them or break them. I'm going to do a mag change while there's a round in the chamber. Okay, it's called a combat reload. Definitely shoot, move, communicate, switching positions, practice your draw from the holster. If you don't remember all this stuff on the run, just, just watch this video, take some notes, practice your mag changes, throw in some dummy rounds or have your buddy pack your mags and put some empty mags in there. Practice all that stuff. It's not about how fast you are, guys. It's about being smarter and fighting smarter, okay? That's really, at the end of the day, what's most important. So the backpack plate carrier system from Zahal, just like everything from Zahal, the recoil spring in my pistol, the hat I'm wearing, everything is awesome. It's all awesome. The 
plate carrier setup here. Pretty cool. Uh, not my favorite plate carrier, but it's cheap. It's from LA Police Gear. You know, that it works. It, it held up. It, the plastic buckles broke, whatever. The RTS Tactical. Look at this. All the Look at all the, the particles of metal that would have been spraying falling out when I open it up. Pretty awesome. Just tons of hits all over the place. And actually very pleasantly surprised with this RTS tactical rifle plate because the, the real downside, whoa, tons of lead falling out, tons of hits. The real downside to this is the weight. It's just crazy heavy, but it takes a ton of hits, a ton of hits and zero impacts. The other really cool thing is that it's two layers. So all of that lead that you saw falling out instead of flying around and, and ricocheting and flying all over the place, stays or at least slows down and then falls or reduces velocity and then comes out this double layer system they have here, which is really cool. Other than just being extremely heavy, this plate is pretty awesome. I guess I would recommend using this if you're somebody who is either extremely fit and just doesn't care about the weight or if you're just not really gonna be doing any moving around anyway. But I'm gonna be using this for a target now for practice because it's awesome. And I don't have to worry as much about the fragments hitting me when I'm training, which is never fun. Questions and comments below, guys. Let me know what you like best about this video and I'll expand on those topics. Let me know what you didn't like and I'll limit that stuff. Thanks for watching. Bone out.